Hello everybody at Upload, welcome to GDC. Today we are checking out the new LG headset that they just announced. This is the second Steam VR headset that you're going to be able to buy apart from the Vive that will all work with the Steam VR uh, platform, their games, experiences, and as well as the Lighthouse uh, lighthouses that people already own. So we're going to talk to the LG team and see what's built in this headset. Let's check it out. So let's talk a little bit about what LG does best, which is displays and optics. Um, what have you re done research on and how have you developed it into this headset uh, that's better? And what have we seen before? We developed a very comfortable, comfortable VR disc. We have three interesting points. The one is flipping and sliding and weight balance. So weight, based on weight balance, you can flip up. So you can talk to another people while uh, you, while wearing VRD, and especially for the uh, people who are wearing glasses, we can we sliding horizontally. What other com comfort features have you done research on and, and integrated into this headset uh, that other people haven't really done yet? So I think wider FOV, and the how do you achieve that? Using refractive lens, we uh, uh, we were able to enlarge the FOV. So refractive lenses is not a Fresnel lens, so it doesn't have ridges, correct? Like an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive. So it's a clear, one um, smooth lens. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about how that works? And you mentioned FOV gets increased by using that. Oh, it's a very, very difficult question for me. <laughs> I know that we've developed both types of lenses and we've t we're testing both types of lenses, but at the moment we've decided to go with the refractive route. If, if the professional lens in the future becomes better, then we could, we could definitely move to that with a commercial product, but it still depends on what, what, what looks best and what's most comfortable, yeah. I think the refractive lens is good for contrast, so um, the very clear image, so, so we are uh, uh, comparing two types of lens, Fresnel lens and refractive lens. So, for the customer, we we are going to get customer feedback at the GDC, and and then we can decide which type. This one. So um, that's the lens. I think that's one part of the display unit. The second is the actual panels themselves. So, can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing special here? Okay, panel is very important for. Uh, removing screen door effect. Um, currently, we are using LG Display's OLED panel. And um, have you sorry? Have you customly built these panels for? Because I know the LG phones are LCD displays. Um, so I, I guess we haven't really seen too many near eye displays that are OLED from LG. So this is something custom, or are we retrofitting from other products on the LG line? Yeah. Current panel for dev kit are not customized yet, but in the future we will customize the panels for VR. So currently it's developing. And so, the, on the panel itself, how have you tried to reduce screen door effect um, and reduce the amount of? I, I think it's the same amount of pixels that other headsets put out there. Is is that correct? It's 2160 by. No, it's is it more? Oh, it's 2880. It's 2880 by. 1280. So per eye, it's 1440 by 1280. Yeah, so it's a little bit bigger than what's out there at the moment. Yeah, but keep in mind this is development kit, so we're, we're trying to push as many pixels as we possibly can into this device for commercial release. So if you're pushing more pixels uh, to the headset, do the same games work the same way uh, than yeah, they, they do? Run at just a higher resolution, correct? Yeah. Can you repeat that again? Yeah, the games would run at definitely a higher resolution. Yeah. Awesome. And does that require more processing power than from the average card? Well, at the moment, it runs on a, on on a, on the average setup. I think the boxes we have here are, are running on was it 1060? Are they? 1060. I think. Yeah, running on a 1060. Um, obviously, if we increase the resolution, we might have to increase the recommendation of the graphics card. Yeah. But the minimum VR spec right now is running these headsets. Yeah. That's Correct. confirmed. That's cool. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the design of the controller and how you came to this uh, configuration? Uh, the first time we cooperate with Bell, so originally Bell would design this controller, and then we uh, designed the shape of this controller, like 
At the first time, the name of this console was Viper. 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 Yeah. Viper. Yeah. So, and the system button was moved to this position because a lot, a lot of people uh, accidentally pressed the system button, so we moved to the button to the front. And two app buttons for our developers. And uh, Is that more than the current HTC Vive controller? Because there's one button on top and then the system button on the bottom. So there's one more button you, uh, that you've introduced. Yeah, right. One more button. So um, it's for the developers. And the grip button is a, bit, a little bit lower, so we can press it very com comparable, yeah. Nice. Um, with the surface area, you said this is your design that you got, that LG has come up with so that you can maximize the amount of coverage that That's it can right. get. The tracking is very um, robust um, comparing to those controllers before. So the tracking performance is very nice. So this controller has bumps on it. However, I don't see any bumps on the headset itself. Uh, is, are you doing something clever to, to hide the, the receptors, actually? Actually, uh, the technology is always the same. But uh, we use the spray mask to uh, selectively transparent to, to IR laser. So we can um, get a better design without dimples. So you have a nicer, sleeker design without having to show the same bumps uh, that they would. So could you, I guess, do the same thing on the controllers as well so that you don't see that? Sure, I think, yeah, it is possible. It is possible, but, you know, this is just a dev kit. <laughs> so we had no time to enhance the controller design. But I think uh, more time, we need to do that, yeah. Awesome, and so it's for developers that are aspiring to look for the next platform, what can they expect uh, from LG in terms of putting this into their workflow and you know, some kind of a timeline perhaps? We are going to uh, distribute the dev kit after GDC for the selective partners, and then we are going to have an announcement uh, maybe second half of this year. Maybe we are going to uh, produce many dev case for developers? Um, I guess let's look at it. It has one cord that's sticking out and that this is looks like a USB. Yes, right. Type -C. Oh, that's a type USB Type-C and this is running both display, power and everything. Yes, right. This is the, uh, we, we call it one cable, one integrated cable. So we had uh, signal, power and display data. So everything is on this uh, on this on, on this cable, yeah. And it seems like the cable is short, um, but is there a way that you can get a longer cable and do bigger and longer things? Um, actually, the cable is short because we are trying to develop the wireless box here and just put the cable to the wireless box and you get the waste. So after that, we are we have another extension cable to connect it. Are you not? Are you showing that off at uh, GDC this year? The wireless box? No, it's, no. I'm sorry. It's developing under the development. Still under development, but you expect for the USB Type C to plug into something, and then transmit that video wirelessly to your PC. Yes, right. Currently, the plan is the, with the wireless box, we can transmit image data and signal all together. But the bandwidth is um, currently we, it's a lack of bandwidth, so um, I think it takes time. Have you tried the 60 gigahertz bandwidth <laughs> or the wavelength? <laughs> I tried, but it has a lot of problems <laughs> currently, yeah. Most, most definitely. Is, would perhaps this headset be also compatible with other uh, accessory manufacturers? I think they are, if they are steam compatible, we are compatible to all those devices. I think, yeah. Awesome. This seems, uh, thank you so much for giving us an in-depth look. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Exciting times ahead. More, he more headsets are being developed for Steam VR, and so all these VR ex experiences are going to be more accessible than ever. Thank you.